Big one. Should have done this at the top. You Hold on, guys... no. thank you. I want to say thank actually, you. Should have done it at the top. Done. Thank you to everyone who's um, um, contributed and spread the word about helping out Mount Tabor. Should have said way at the beginning, and I don't know. Yeah, maybe you can sure, throw, throw it in there in editing. I don't know, but like, just want to say like off the top. Thank you. God bless you. It it means a lot. And like, yes, the dollars means a lot. But actually, to be really frank seeing support from people from all over the place it's really encouraging you guys have never met us before so i just want to say like god bless you guys it it means a lot and it's it it is an investment it's it's think it it is almsgiving because it's it's for the kingdom of god it's for young souls to be enriched and to grow uh, to become human beings made and fashioned after the image and likeness of god so God bless you guys. Thank you so, so much. Welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew. Tonight, I'm going to ask Cyprian and Father Turbo, what is your least favorite um, secular holiday? We already talked about favorites, but what's your least favorite? What's the one that just you just don't vibe with? Because I got mine, if you guys need. Mm-hmm. Well, mine is New Year's. I hate New Year's. Yeah. I just, I know I'm that. New Year's fan. It's yeah, I'm not a New Year's fan either. It's generally Especially a bunch of here. <laughs> oh my god! Man, Kansas City, right it's... next to our house, bro. It's... It was so funny. Like I was talking with someone who just moved from California to Arkansas, and we were we were talking after vespers, or whatever. And then it, just, you know, I mean, it's like seven, whatever. It's like, mm-hmm. and I mean, you know, automatic is going up, <laughs> and he's like. Uh, father what was that i'm like welcome to kansas city (laughs) (laughs) so this does not happen is this like Chirac in here it's like (laughs) i don't know what the deal is but i've never lived in a town before where it's like no what we do every time the chiefs or the uh royals win or it's the fourth of july or it's new year's we just fire guns into the air like non-stop like non-stop and I don't know what it is, but like it happens here every, like no matter where you go, we go out in Ray, Raytown and like literally like it's like da 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 da. I was like, there's no mistaking that that's not fireworks. Like that is Are a gun. Fireworks legal uh, in uh, Kansas yeah City? yeah in Missouri. Like that's kind of what Missouri's known for is their um their fireworks. Oh, like fans? yeah, so Do people um, come in and come in across the border to buy fireworks. I think so. I last I heard, but that was years and years and years ago. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm just not big into New Year's. I think that New Year's also is like it's usually known for debauchery. I'm not really into yeah. that. And like, yeah. um, and it means that like as a kid, it's like this like um, uh, what's the Pavlovian response of when I know New Year's is coming up? Like the Western holidays are over. Like. Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas, all of it's it's over, and it's just like, mm. and what a could not pick a worse time of year to end a holiday season into leading into January, which is the grayest, coldest, mm. you know, darkest month of the year, quote unquote. Which is nice being Orthodox because I talked about this as fathers, like all the celebration happens to twelve days after Nativity, so the big emotional hangover that everyone feels after the Western holidays. That ain't a problem in the Orthodox Church. Like, mm. like you, you, the celebration comes after the holiday. So, mm. yeah. yeah, I would probably have to say New Year's is my. I, I, I can't think of a time when I was like really gung ho and looking forward to New Year's. I think I was. I've always just been like, oh, this is, and and I feel that there's um, there is a real. De- demand that i don't like 
that is like, oh, well, we have to do something for New Year's. Like, and it's got, and it's got to be why. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, and and it's you know? and it's got to be something like grandiose yeah. and gaudy. It's always very gaudy and grandiose, and it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I was gonna say, I was gonna say Valentine's Day, but I think that was. Just I, that was my second. <laughs> that was the, your, my second one. Yeah. You know, but, no, but I think right. I think it's my second because I think I, I just. I mean, the thing. Well. Maybe it's mine is Valentine's because like I've come to enjoy New Year's a little bit because of my children. Right. Because it's a great time to be with my kids. And like we had a tradition, although we broke it. We've broken the tradition. I tried to establish tradition. We did it for a few years, which is great. We watch we watched this um Dead Can Dance performance every year mm. and have Chinese <laughs> food, which mm. was like really great. Um that's a like, very qualls esque <laughs> yeah. like tradition without yeah, a doubt. It was great. But like New Year's has always been a bad thing for me because my dad, may God grant him paradise. He, he, I, I think I had a great father, but you know, he gave me a really long leash, which at the time I was grateful mm. for. But looking back now, I was like, a mm. little bit too long of a leash, you know. But it, God worked it out. But the thing my dad would always tell me, the reason why I said that is because my dad didn't put anything on me. So much so that it made my sister jealous at times, you know, because mm. I was like, I, you know, but I was a boy, so I could do whatever. But he said, listen, man, there's two things, you know, I don't want you doing. Don't go out on New Year's and don't go to Mexico. <laughs> no, that's, that's, those are the only restrictions my dad ever put on me once I was like 16. How hard was it to not go to Mexico, father? What's that? Be, how hard was it to not go to Mexico after that? You know what? I've been to Iraq. I've been to Kosovo. I've been to Sarajevo. I've never been to Mexico. Really? Never. Oh, I've never you, been to Mexico. You listened. You listened. And I still don't go out on New Year's. I yeah. I feel like if my dad had told me not to go to Mexico, I'd be like, well, adios, amigo. Like I'm going to uh I'm going to Mexico. I will see you later. I will I'll just I'm gonna put this correction in here real quick. St. Patrick's Day. That is my least favorite holiday. Because really? that's yeah, that's um that it's okay, just I'm a sorry. drinking holiday. Well, I don't mean to be a downer, but that's when my brother died. He died for, on that night well, because of his being a drunken idiot. And so um yeah, yeah so St. Patrick's Day, that sucks. In like a couple of years, it was like two years after I got sober, I was driving through this area in Kansas City that's known for bars. And I was it was like one o'clock in the afternoon. And there's these two middle-aged women. And I say mi middle-aged, I'm not talking about like middle-aged, like suburban middle-aged. Like these women were clearly probably in the service industry still. They are both like definitely like make up up, like trying to have a good St. Patty's Day. And they were mm -hmm. standing outside arguing, like drunkenly arguing, being like, they're like, you always do this. And the other woman's like, oh, oh, do I? Do I do that? And I was like, oh my gosh. And you guys still have like 12 hours ahead of you still. To, yeah. to like to work through this day you know the thing about st patty's is all is like it took on a whole new dimension for me coming to the church because it was like mm. how weird that here's this really great saint and then mm -hmm. it's 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 all it's almost like I, it, it's almost it's like profaning this oh, like memory of the saint you know what i mean yeah yeah i mean people don't think of it that way you know mm -hmm. they don't think of it that way but is anyway. Saint is Saint Valentine an Orthodox Saint Father? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Right on. Yeah. Mm. He's a bishop. Oh, really? What yeah, about it's what? It's not time? like it's the cute. Didn't shoot bow and arrows at people to get them to fall in love. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah, and that's the other thing that has really been bothering me the last couple of days is I've been noticing how quickly people take down their Christmas decorations. And it's not even like I'm trying to be like the guy that's like, no, keep it going. But it's like, it's like the 27th and businesses are taking down their stuff. I'm like, there's like no room for this to breathe. It's like this whole season builds up to this one morning on the 25th of just like this frantic consumerism. That's the, that's what it is. Consumerism. It's yeah. The consumerism. And then yeah. once that's done, it's like, well, Christmas is over. And I'm like, mm. you know, like, I just don't, I don't really buy that. And like, it's but very it unnatural. But but Festivus is over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, for real. It's well, not my for kids us. Were bugging I, me I, to take down the tree. My kids were like, 
Papa, take down the tree. And then my wife said, nope, no, nope, no. Nope, nope. No, it's 12 days. It's she till said, theophany, bro. It's till theophany. I said, okay, all right, it's staying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, and like that, that just like speaks to like the plasticky nature of it, of like this whole like, and my wife, God bless her, was trying this thing tonight, or trying something this year of like reducing the materialism. And, you know, I'm, I'm of course, I'm, I am who I am. So I think that like sometimes she goes a little bit too hard. Um, but this year it was shown like my daughter got a pair of like superhero books or whatever made for kids. She opened them and she literally threw them aside when she was done with them. When yeah. when she saw what it was, she threw it aside. She's like, OK, what's next? Like, yeah. see, this is it. This is how we know this is a problem. And like yeah. afterwards, when she realized she had no presence no more presents to open. I like sat down with her and she's kind of at that age and she's smart. So she can kind of get, and I remember telling her, I was like, look, you feel that sad feeling inside you right now. You know, that sad feeling that like kind of empty, like sad feeling. That's why this can't be about presence. This is wow. why this has to be about Christ. Like this doesn't make any sense. Does it? She's like, no, why are that? Why was that it? I was like, see, that's the thing. It's not it. Like, that's what the world is going to tell you is Christmas, but that's not what's Christmas. And I can tell you from personal experience, I tried for years and years and years to replicate the Christmas magic. And it was only when I became a catechumen again, and I've talked about this on the show before, that I actually started to draw near to Christ. I was like, truly like, oh my gosh, it's so stupid and it's so simple, but it's like, of course it's Christ. That, that typical, like even Western iconography to a degree you know, Western depictions of like the town of Bethlehem or the ta yeah the town of Bethlehem with the little manger in there. It's like mm -hmm. still with the star right above it. It's like, that's it. Like, that's what's going on here. Like the without telling anybody, <laughs> Christ became incarnate. And without like mentioning it, by the way, like that's he's, he didn't drop that one on the angels and be like, hey, guess what's happening? He just had it happen. And that's that's what makes sense to me. Like, that's the thing that like I have to cling to. So, yeah, there's a, that's a, I think that's a really good conversation. I'm going to use that with, with my own kids because yeah, the weaning, the weaning process, definitely it's got to take place at some point where they can understand and have the conversation. But I really, really like, like, because that's really what that is, is that it's like this, this whole, that's what happens is like, the whole consumer culture, it's its all about putting a hole inside somebody. Yeah. Like an unfillable hole. Yeah. And then you just go That's and it. it's like, well, what more? What more? And it's a, the ad on the TV is like, buy this and fill that hole. Like that's ultimately what you said. Mm -hmm. Oh, you need this and fill that hole. And it's like, well, I've got it. And the hole's not filled, you know? Yeah. And then you're, and then you're Andrew Tate talking about, I've got 33 cars. And it's like, well, dude. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man. Oh. There's man. One, you you have you have one one body. <laughs> yeah. And like that that same conversation is the conversation I think that like the fact that people don't have it, like that's the troubling part. And like mm -hmm. I've been thinking about this because like um I've been thinking about like the like uh oh what's it um not prescriptive programming but like when someone predictive, watches, predictive, programming. predictive programming thank you thank you i've been thinking about that like this aspect of how television plays this part in people's lives because i run into this a lot with people when i'm counseling like well it's not supposed to be like this well why why do you think it's not supposed because that's not what tv told me you know tv told me this would get wrapped up in a half hour you know like personal problems or problems that like we are silly and then we'll have a serious conversation and like i see people regularly act as though they're on TV. I don't know. Does that, I don't know if that makes sense, but like, it's something Absolutely. that like I run into where like emotionally, they still are thinking that this is the way that things are supposed to go down. And like when it doesn't, that disappointment is so visceral. It's like, you almost have a choice at that point of whether or not to recognize it or not recognize that you're getting disappointed. And then like people can continue on like this sound like, no, I'm not disappointed if I just continue on with the external, the, the internal will come. It doesn't matter that like, I'm not feeling Christmas. I just keep putting up like more decorations until I feel it. And it's like, but you again, 
I know this is not the right vocabulary, but it's lacking center. You're not you're you're building an empire around a black hole. There's nothing there, you know. So not well, only that, it's, but it's it becomes it becomes industrialized. Like that, what you're describing is industrialized now. Like I started calling it the wedding photo effect many years ago, like <laughs> probably like 15 years ago with social media. That's good. Where it was like everybody would because it was all about putting up the like got to have the amazing wedding photos. Right. Sure. Amazing wedding photo, engagement photo and stuff. And then I'd be like, I know these people. And I know their marriage. You know what I mean? It ain't nothing like that photo. But then every like because they have it, then there's some female friend. You know what I mean? Who's like, oh, well, then we've got to do it. Yeah. And then, oh, then then we've got to do it. And it's like and everybody's faking. Did you ever Cyprian, did you or father, did you ever watch the show Portlandia? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there was one episode where, like, I forget exactly what happens, but there's, like, they go to Rome for, like, 12 hours or something like that, and the trip is just awful, and, like, the couple that's on the trip is just, they're just miserable, they hate it the entire time, like, they oversleep, and, you know, it's just a, I can't remember exactly what happens, but then when they come home, they're talking to their friends, like, how's your trip to Rome? He's like, it was terrible. It's like, Really? that's not what it seemed like on Facebook. And it showed these pictures of like the couple and they're like taking pictures at the airport and like looking at the toilet and the outlets and stuff like that. And somebody said like, Oh, they must've cropped out the sadness. And I was like, that's what I always call that. It's like you cropping out the sadness. And um, ever since then, like you see it a lot and there's, mm -hmm. I mean, you talked about it, Cyprian, there's influencer spots or whatever, yep. where people show up to get their pictures taken and yep. you can see that Megan, I saw this lady one time, or this young woman, go to her car and change and then come back and take another photo, go to her car and change, come back and take another photo, you know, like they brought, like, they, I'm they done rent, after this. They rent out parked private jets. <laughs> I never, man. They that rent is out bleak. parked, they, they have them at Las Vegas airport. That is, bleak. that's For so. For no other reason than to go and take an influencer photo. Walk out onto the tarmac, get on. Go inside. You get it. You get the do whatever you want to do for like twenty minutes. How much would that run? I don't know. I don't know. I I, I Who cares? It's I've fake. never looked. <laughs> it's all, I've never looked. I'd never do fake. it. <laughs> Everything's fake. This is this is the last thing we're gonna do. Some audience questions. That's what we're gonna do. This is the last thing. Then I'll I'll be done. I'll get off my I'll get off my box, my soapbox or whatever. But like those, like I've never really seen too many of them. But like the like couples that do like a coordinated dance for tiktok or whatever you know what i mean like that's just so bleak in yeah, so the, many ways the best <laughs> one is there is this one oh man i mean every once in a while it just was a good one because there's two my my wife found one there was another one it was like uh this guy's it's like a guy he's like green screening himself like in like a footlock or whatever and he takes all these tiktoks like all these workers who are dancing he's like why aren't you just working? So it's like, so he's, he's like, he's like in Foot Locker, they're like doing a dance, you know, then he's like in the barbershop and there's like a TikTok guy. Like it's, it was, it, it it's great because it's so meta. Cause it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's a YouTube short or whatever, but it's this thing where like, I guess it started like during the pandemic with like the yeah. nurses dancing. Right. But oh like, my gosh. I mean, it was everything. It was like, air traffic controller a barber like mcdonald's workers like and of course you got like the super flamboyant like uh starbucks guys doing kicks over their heads oh, no. and it's just like i like, kind of imagine nobody what... works you know what i mean it's like everyone's and I the kinda... thing is I, this is this is the thing i mean it's great he superimposes like the sneaker squeak and everything but you, you got to see it but like the the thing about it is it's so like it's so we know this, but it's one of those moments when it was just so real to me. It's like, oh my gosh, man! Like everyone's this is this is a snapshot of reality now. These people are working at McDonald's, all, all these jobs, and like that's that's real life, whatever. But they're so desperate for their yeah. like moment, like may this go viral, may this go viral. You know what I mean? And it, it's like you're coordinating dances, and you're like putting these out there just hoping and begging that like someone's going to validate your existence like you know what i mean and it was just 
it's something we it's a critique we all know but just the, the way that it was played out it was just it was really really brilliant but you you contrast that though with the one that i found which was there's this waffle house riot that broke out <laughs> and there's this there's this waffle house worker which she's incredible she's like they throw this chair the full-on waffle house riot oh, i've seen that one yeah <laughs> and she like catches the chair in midair and then her face and then she you know come on and bring it thing it's just like i go see that lady right there middle you know she's a texas texan woman just trying to work at the waffle house and she's like ready to rumble i'm like man that's okay america that's, no, that's cool. <laughs> you know, like, she's she genuine. Genuine. i, she's I can get behind that but... you gotta see it it's it's actually it, it is worth seeing because it's it's I can't incredible. Have, it's one of those but, moments like you can't believe someone caught it on film. You wouldn't believe it. It's incredible. What father described with like everyone like on TikTok, like at Starbucks and McDonald's or whatever. I imagine, I don't know. I'm just talking crap, but I imagine that it's like living in LA right now. It's just like, you probably can't get anywhere without being streamed. But the thing that bothers me the most about those like couples coordinating thing is like, just imagine like they had to sit down and write this dance. They had to like choreograph this dance. And like, you had to imagine there has to be bloopers. And the blooper that makes me laugh is the idea of like the husband, like freaking out. And it's like, step, change, step, step. I don't know how many times you have to go through this, Stephanie, and like flipping out. And it's like, just to get this stupid dance down. And like, I don't, I don't get the culture at all. Like, I don't get the culture. And I mean, father's right. It's like people begging not for money, but for attention. And and then it's that hole. It's the consumerist hole again. It's the same yeah. hole. Right. Yeah. So it's like fill it with stuff or fill it with like like you know, likes have become currency in a way. Oh, like a social cur- a type of a social currency, a type of a it's a, almost a, like a, there's a system in place for that. And maybe like the world, one of the big, world's biggest countries, you know. Well, likes are like the incense, right? That, uh, because they even go up into the air. Yeah, the like oh. is the incense, and you're offered, oh. and it's your own little moment of being worshipped, you know. So it's like, oh yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. It is, isn't yeah. it? it and every it's like, like I mean, is a pinch of incense. It's a pinch of incense, mm. and like it, it's one of those things where, uh, it's it's one of the many many reasons. But it's just one we could zero in on about like why people like hate Christ, why people hate Christianity, you know. And and I know we all know the trope, whatever. But like, um, yeah, people people don't really hate Christianity; they hate Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like yeah, there's plenty of there's plenty of people uh, like in rants and stuff like that that can make you not like Christianity because of, you know, their their take on it and all the weird things that have done, that's fine. But really what it boils down to is, is they hate Christ because Christ is the only one that calls people out on their idolatry, yeah. self-worship, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like people don't even need to know that kind of deep spiritual insight that we're always talking about in regards of like what idolatry really is. They can just feel it. They just know it. Like, you know yeah. that Christ doesn't, like that you like you know that christ doesn't like it's just it's you don't even you may not even understand the principle or the concept of it you just know sure that, you know what i mean christ is like uh you i know, don't know about and, that yeah and that's why what's what's a funny thing to me is like that's why it's even more offensive it's like this is interesting it, there's these things like I, I was just seeing this thing um, with this other guy, um, ABL, this like um, black conservative guy, and he was talking about can uh, not can England has their first non-binary priest or whatever, so like the um, EOC, I guess, I guess it's EOC, not not, um, not, um, not EOC, um, COE, COE, EOC is another thing. Uh, uh. So, coe has its first like binary whatever named like jacks allison or something i don't know and it, he was just kind of like, he had a really good insight actually because he's talking about it's like okay like i don't even know what the thing is but it's it, it's like a bi non-binary person like so like there's the weird long hair mullet thingy 
but then there's the kind of like war paint, I, you know, fifth element eyeshadow thing, right? And then like, you know, the weird, um, forgive me, I know this could be offensive to people, but like the weird um androgynous overweight thing that happens, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where it's like, right? So there's a caller there, and he had a good point. It's like earrings. So he's like, okay, I see the caller that's supposed to denote you being a priest, but it's like earrings, right? So like he's like, earrings, do nuns even wear earrings? Like, what's mm -hmm. like why earrings? You know what I mean? And I didn't finish the whole thing, but I just bring that up because like that type of weird distortion and perversion, like there's something that gets magnified in in like um yeah it gets it gets magnified and concentrated under the um the kind of like magnifying glass of digital media does that mm -hmm. make sense you know it's like and it and it really highlights how antithetical to to Christ and to a, a true christian experience it is because you know i mean we, we talk a lot about you know the dangers well not a lot but we talk about the dangers of the platform that we're on right now but there's something about it, it seems like it's becoming something else is happening there's there's these weird things that are happening that um like the percentages of people who are down with this are probably so so slim and low yeah but it doesn't matter because it is it, it might as well be everybody because that's how that's the perception yeah well they don't well, well most people are just unaware to them it's just like all of this is just it's just the soup that they're swimming in sure I think some which is weird because it's so new that i mean that like i'm gonna be 45 this year and it's like mm -hmm. i graduated high school and basically nobody was on the internet Right. I was one of the few people who had ever, who even knew how to get on the internet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, ubiquitous. it's you bit, but yeah, but people, my same age, it's like, they've never been without a smartphone. Like you, you, you talk to them and like, it's, there's, there's no, and it's weird. I just, I mean, I just had a conversation a uh, day before yesterday on the beach with a friend uh, who's here, fellow Californian. His dad had come in. They're from the Bay Area. We sat and talked, you know, and we were kind of going back over, oh, this from, you know, back in the day and in Cali and all of this. But, yeah, I feel like the conversation is not had enough or, like, it's maybe it's notable that it never comes up for somebody to be like, don't you think it's kind of weird? This mm -hmm. world that we're living in, like, we're not separated from our phones. Mm -hmm. we're, we, we do this like it was second nature, and yet, like, we were adults when this was introduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and all of it from top, top, and not just the devices, but I mean, even top down from just how we consume content, what we think about that content, what we understand about the world, the tick, the TikTok planning, mm -hmm. like all these things. I mean, it's, it's like, it is, it's the wire mesh that's part of the trap, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's the actual hard, hardware of of the trap to some degree and and it, what's funny is i don't know if you you caught it but um i never heard of the guy but a couple different people sent it it's the it's um I can't remember i don't know what the guy's name is but he's talking about ai um i don't know if you saw it it's uh what's this cat it's like it was like called get rich in the ai revolution adapt or die i don't know what the guy's name oh, is. oh i don't know uh, I'll send it to you. Like it's it's kind of wild. It's funny because we're doing this right now in real time, right? Yep, but yep. um it's pretty interesting what he's talking about because first of all, it, it's further along than than I think oh, yeah. most oh, people yeah. are like are like realizing, and it's not really what people think it is either. But what what I'm finding so fascinating about this is that um it's it's I don't know how to explain it except for the fact it's like uh, it's weird seeing something that's already happened but people don't aren't don't aware they're not aware that it's happened it's almost like um, you know someone's still eating uh, you know someone's still eating and drinking at the cafe 
literally they don't realize though that like you know two miles out from from the shore the tsunami's hit and it's coming you know what i mean and it's just like it's it's already a wrap there there is no like how do we stop it where you know what i mean where are we gonna go it's like there's what's we were already like you said we're already swimming in what's already happened and i find that really fascinating because there's we are in this weird space where we're aware of these things um and it's like what what do you do you know what do you do now for us as orthodox it's like well we just do what we've always done and we need to preserve and fight for what we know because that's that's the arc and everything we're talking about like the world and just watching the world like i had this thought the other day it's like you know with um andrew tate getting arrested and everything that's a whole other thing itself but i was thinking about he he talked about what is his, his last quote was like the matrix has attacked me that's what he said you know but then i started thinking i was like did it though I don't I think, think so. He, he, no. He's in the. He's 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 a part he's of age, it. He's yeah. an agent. Of the he's matrix. a part of it. You know what I mean? Yes. How, how are you? How are you going to say I've got thirty three cars? Here's my Bugatti, and you're you like the mean? Matrix is coming for me. No, dude. He's he's a part that's of the it. Matrix. He's a part of it. You know, and 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 that's kind of what I'm talking about. It's like for as for as crazy and twisted as we think it is, like this world, it's so much further so, down than than we're even realizing. So I, I just, I got to ask this and I'm really no greater love is there for, than this, because I know we're about to get into a conversation that I'm going to really struggle to pay attention to, because I don't think it's very interesting, but I do feel like it's got to be asked, like, what's the difference between Andrew Tate and Kanye then? Like, because like, we're talking about two people who have really, you know, maybe even canceled, quote unquote, you know, blah, 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 are prob labeled as problematic personalities. But where it is like, you know, but they're both like one could definitely argue. And I, I think there would be pretty compelling evidence to argue that like we, you have your Kanye's in, in my opinion, and I'm not necessarily right, but your Alex Joneses of like, we'll send in the clowns, send in the clowns. Like, you know, like we, we've got to do something over here. It's like that same theory that Britney Spears always did something crazy whenever George Bush wanted the spotlight taken off of him. Britney would go do something crazy. It's like send in the clowns, send in the clowns, get them in there so that the people start looking at them. I'm not saying Kanye West is. I think that there's compelling evidence that he is, you know, but like I, I don't really know one way or the other. So, Father, what makes Andrew different than Kanye? I don't think there's necessarily something that makes him different in that sense. Well, they're okay. the same container. But the I think the content is this, the is, this is actually the, the real shame with Kanye is that he doesn't have to use that container. So like they're both using the influencer container, but someone like Andrew Tate shows you that like you can have a complete because his container is empty. Like Andrew Tate's container is empty. There's nothing like he's never built anything. He's never I mean, great. OK, champion kickboxer. That's fantastic. But his kickboxing career is over. You know what I mean? Like he's, it's, it's just the container and everything that he does is just the container. Now, unfortunately, like Kanye uses that same container, but clearly Kanye is, is like, has produced, you know, metaphorically and, and literally like he's actually brought a lot of things into the world. Right. Andrew Tate has, Andrew Tate has never, and most influencers have never, have never. If Kanye's real problem is that he's using that he doesn't have to he doesn't have to be an influencer. Well, I think the thing is though is like the thing that's the thing that the thing that was compelling about Andrew Tate's run, and the thing that's compelling about Kanye's run or whatever, and it's and I think this is part of the thing about separating the precious from the worthless, and that's why it's never about like the person. You know what I mean? Like okay. just like it's not about me, right? Because like it doesn't you know <laughs> christ's strength is made perfect in weakness right so that's what's compelling about me is that i am a obviously a broken vessel right and so since i'm such an obviously broken vessel i think that's what allows people to maybe if you know see christ hear christ see the church does that make sense that's what's compelling i'm not compelling as a person that I, that's that's the first thing but the second thing is when you look at them, it's like, okay, 
they were giving it's they're giving enough of a glimpse of something that's true they're they were calling out something that is true like the 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 seams you know in the garment the cracks in the wall however you want to look at it that they were calling out you know it it was it was true but it was still really not that big of a deal because it's things that people already knew knew but they were kind of saying the quiet the quiet parts out loud that's what was kind of like so compelling and more so in 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 Kanye's sense because there was a real like I, I, and I'm still hope I'm still holding out you know we're still holding out for Andrew Tate hopefully he'll you know him getting arrested you know if it isn't a thing right maybe it could facilitate real repentance because that's what it's about is that their souls would be saved because Kanye's come really close to to Christ and the truth you know but it's it's for me I'm what I'm why I'm cooling down is because just like he's getting on this whole you know and it's Keep 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 in praying for him. It's like he's getting on this whole Hebrew Israelite like nonsense. You know what I mean? But it's like we remember those moments. He was like that one faithful day in 2021, I think it was in 21, when he was like throughout all those icons that one night, you know, boom, 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 like icon of St. Moses, icon of like the ascension, all those things. So it's like he's skimming real, real, real close to, to the truth of the church, right? That's what's compelling because like most of us all of us, whatever, he's had these moments of touching something and seeing like, oh, the machine is bad. I was in the machine as part of the machine, machine is bad. But like what he doesn't, and what he doesn't realize, I think, is that there's still this, which this could be part of what you're saying, Andrew. We all get the sense there's still some kind of, uh, there's the matrix within the matrix and he's still plugged in somehow. Like he yeah. hasn't, he hasn't really broken out free. You know what I mean? Sure. And I think I think that's the thing where it's kind of like, you know, we'll see what Reason. happens. But I, well, I can't really 100% back Dave Chappelle. Like, I love I love Dave Chappelle. I think he makes some really good points, and I think he does it well. But there's still parts of him it's like, yeah, I mean, I still don't trust, like, yeah. a lot of what this dude is saying. Like, he's not there, and, like, he's seeing some things. But again, you know. I so mean, his... That like this, this I'm glad you brought that up because this brings to me like kind of encapsulating what I'm saying but not doing a good job of, which is, you know, the for me the best part of his SNL that last SNL um, monologue he gave was he was talking about uh, President Trump, how he went into the White House, came out and said, "Look, this is what we're doing in there," and he told yeah. everybody, "This is what we're doing." And then he went back in and just start doing it again, you know? Yeah. Like that was like, yeah, okay. And and there's something about when everyone knows everything's fake, the craziest thing to do is to start telling some truth. Not the whole truth, but just some truth. And I think that's what Kanye's done. That's what Tate's done. You know, that's what President Trump did. They started telling some truths in a whole, you know, it's like in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, you know? So in the land of just absolute insanity, clown, fake, plastic, everything, just the slight, just a half a finger of something, you know, real, true, courageous, all the, all the opposite things of what we've seen the last three years. It's like, I think that's what people responded to, but what they don't realize is they're responding so viscerally to it because of how starved. Oh, for real. There's something, you yes. know, not yes. completely vapid, right? Like that's, yes. and I think that's what people, you know, this is when people talked about why people didn't get like why Trump won. Well, first of all, forgive me. Everyone knows I'm a cynic about that stuff. I, I, I you know, I still got a whole like, like thought process about that, but just to humor people. And let's just say like, there is such a thing as democracy and your vote doesn't matter. Let's just say that, right? Um, the thing that people didn't get though, or at least why there's at least such popular support is because that is because things are so bad that someone's saying just, you know, one iota of something that like, wasn't the craziness people were so starved, you know, and that's think, probably pretty intentional, correct? Like it's intentional to lead people yeah, to a state of that. For, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Oh, for, like, con for control as a control yeah, mechanism. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. that's, oh, that's tell that's a half daily. truth. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. But like, even getting people so starved. That's part of the, I mean. Oh, getting people starved. Yeah, yeah. that's like, part of the Hegelian dialectic, right? It's like mm-hmm. bringing these two opposites to bring a synthesis. How do you get people to drink really crappy water is you get them super, super thirsty. Super thirsty. And then you're like, yeah. Drink anything. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, There's... yeah, being, being hungry is good. Being starving is terrible. Yeah. Like you don't want to be starving because you'll make bad decisions. Yep. That's right? it. Every single time. Father, Hunger brings to... clarity. Hunger brings yes. clarity. Hunger brings clarity. Starvation brings primitive needs like it's like (laughs) yeah yeah. Yeah. so father i want to like i want to circle back because there's this so like there's this vein there's this and i think it's like a really rich vein and i don't feel like it's something that we've spoken about a lot but it was also a vein running through that interview of um metropolitan neophytus of morphu that uh that peter hit father peter Mm -hmm. here and it's it's this vein of you know, when you, this, this, this idea that you said the two things, Christ as con- convicting mm-hmm. us, Christ as calling us out. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing, you know, when you express this idea of like, because you're a broken vessel, then Christ, Christ, people can see Christ more mm-hmm. through, through you. And it, I feel like it's something that in that interview, Bishop Neophytus of Morphu, I forget which saint he said had said this to him i i I wish i could remember and i'll have to go back but you know he had asked it he he had said to him like you'll be a bishop someday you know Mm -hmm. this saint was speaking to uh to him as a young man you'll be a bishop someday and and then he said well what should i well what do i have to say what do why would how could i like i have nothing to say and he said that's right so all you should say is say of the fathers say what you learned from me Say what mm-hmm. you learned from uh, Paisios. Say mm-hmm. what you learned from Porfirio. Say like say say those things and only say those things and don't bring yourself into it because you don't have anything to say anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and I think that that's what it feels like is missing, right? That's that's the thing that <clears throat> I think is missing from an Andrew Tate from a Kanye West is like the moment that they lose me is when they bring themselves into it. Yeah. Well, I mean, let, let's let's break it down, right? Like, and this isn't this isn't a judgment, right? And the reason why this isn't a judgment is because um, we've talked about this before, I think, but I just want to clarify it because, like, the whole thing of like, don't judge me, don't judge me. No, no, no. We gotta inspect fruit, right? But like, when when the church says don't judge, what that means is you're not putting yourself in the place of Christ. So. I'm not saying a final, like, this is where you're headed. This is the totality of your existence, right? Just to be clear, because, like, what's lacking in them is Christ. Like, like truly, right? So so Kanye and Andrew Tate at one point in time talking about the, you know, Romanian Orthodoxy, then he became Muslim, whatever. And you can see his, his motivations, right? You can see his motivations that Kanye's motivations a little bit different because as opposed to, to Andrew Tate, and, uh, you know, bring me back if I'm off base. Um, but I, from my perspective, I discern a little bit of a difference because Andrew Tate is looking for something that's going to align with his moral values. And what I mean by moral values, I don't just mean like whatever, because someone said, does he have moral values? Yeah, everyone has a morality, you know what I mean? But for him, it's like, yeah, I, I respect um, someone who's gonna, you know, Someone says something I don't like, I just, if I can choose and if I want to, I'm going to bash their face in and disfigure them, you know? Like for him, that's a value and that's what Islam does from his perspective. His perspective is Christianity doesn't do that, Islam does. So I'm going to go with what I respect. Islam will, you know, bash one's face him and maim them and it doesn't matter. Okay. Kanye's is birthed out of loss. You see what I'm saying? He was coming to his conclusions out of being broken out of all these different things, right? Which is different, it's different, right? It's something that we can resonate a little bit more. So this is kind of getting back to what was saying. That's why I feel like it could travel a little further down the road with Kanye than Andrew Tate, because his is coming out of a suffering and a brokenness from like this, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let's watch this. Let's see where this goes, right? Okay, now that being said, 
where it ends up stopping is because you can start seeing, well, okay, the brokenness might be the shelf life of it or the, the tank of it might be running out and it might be coming less about being broken and mad about what happened and then more about, again, Kanye himself again. You know what I'm saying? Because the Hebrew Israelite thing, right? That's the easy trap because it's it's that it's the identity, the idol of self. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like as in a, a big victim complex. In a big victim complex. So yeah. as a black man, he's wanting to find something to validate the shame and all the things. We talked about this last time, and it goes for anyone else. It goes to like why lesbian why these people want to find the LGBTQ alphabet soup church, and why everyone wants to find a church that like fits them, which is why orthodoxy is super not popular. Now, the interesting thing about it is there's there's that thing that we saw in, in, you know, that we've been seeing where people want to make it that people want to impose their, you know, to be frank, their nationalism and, you know, their white supremacy on orthodoxy and be like, see, orthodoxy fits this. So it's like they're treat, they will treat orthodoxy kind of like Andrew Tate treated Islam. Right. So it's like they go like orthodoxy is yeah, for yeah, me yeah. because I'm traditionally this and that and the European yeah. culture and blah, blah, blah. It's like there's overlap where it can be like, oh, OK, yeah. But like if you're using that still the same way Andrew Tate used, if you're attracted to orthodoxy, essentially for the same reason why Andrew Tate's attracted to Islam, it doesn't matter because like you don't have Christ. Right. Are you following me? Sure. Right. You're attracted to orthodoxy, but you're not attracted to Christ. <laughs> right. You're not attracted to Christ. Truly. So like, let's right. keep going with that. Right. OK. So okay. the thing is, though, is when you actually apprehend Christ, this is this is why. When someone has Christ, it doesn't really matter. Like when someone has Christ and they're, and they're in when someone has Christ, it's like if you're really looking for Christ, we've talked about this before, you'll find the Orthodox Church. Right. Sure. We are all living proof of it. You're in Saipan. I'm in Kansas City. Andrews in Kansas City. You know what I mean? Like, that's a thing. And the reason for that is, is because Christ is the, the ground and the being. He's the ground and foundation of being. Right. So this is why you can take someone like Elder Joseph the Hesychast, St. Joseph the Hesychast, and St. Porfirios, and there's no conflict between them. Mm -mm. Right. They have different methods. There's a different perspective, but ultimately they're all on the frequency of Christ. And they never met. Right. Like they're all like, well, they, they knew each other noetically, you know, but like, but you, yeah, you know that's saying? yeah, it's like, it's, it's like, you can, you can go throughout. That's why this is, this is that thing where academics, this is the, like, there's the academic Orthodox who, because of their ego, they want to they want to say stupid arguments like well you know the fathers don't agree it's like okay like academic guy get out of here like you're not reading the fathers because well you're reading the fathers but you're reading like the man ambrose the man tertullian you're not looking for christ because christ is that thread that's weaving through all of it are you following me so yeah they're they're express they're expressing christ through the vein of the of of them themselves and yes. so there will be it's not that they're disagreeing no it's the, it's it's like the the angle at which they're seeing the facet is it's different. the facet the, of yes, the jewel yes, yes, christ yes, is the jewel the facet of the they jewel. are the facet that's reflecting yes. all yes. the various okay. things of life okay. and, th and this is like really important because you know this is one of the ways that you reconcile certain things like we're not ecumenists but at the same time like we can where there's christ right i can recognize that with, and that doesn't make me an ecumenist i'm not going to jump in and do an ecumenical prayer service with someone because you are not in the in the fullness of the faith like which is of christ i'm not compromising on that right that's why god was so important to us but at the same time this is where a lot of people they'll miss it right because listen, Orthodox folk, you can't forget when the Lord talked about this in the gospel, I think is today or yesterday, but like, um, you know, when the disciples, the apostles come like, Hey, there's these guys casting out demons that they're not of us. And Lord's like, leave them alone. Right. Does that mean now that Christ is like, Hey, 
whatever the, he's not co-signing whatever they're doing but there's a reality that he acknowledges right because what happens is people's vision of christ is too small like orthodox folk their vision of christ is too small and me saying this you can think whatever you want um i'm not an ecumenist <laughs> you know what i mean I like know. But the thing is, is if you think I am, I'm going to say your, your vision of Christ is too small and he's going to break you of that, right? Because the thing is, is in him, in him, everything is possible, right? And it's possible in such a way that there isn't any confusion. There isn't any kind of like the reality of being able to experience truth right this is the thing this is why seek wisdom find christ and that's why we can be patient with a guy like kanye to be like you're you're cold you know it's cold cold okay hot you're getting hot it, it's a game it's that kind of game right but the thing is is you know where the heat is christ is he's this he's the heat right you know where the heat is and i i think understanding that is 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 key and it's really important because we see this with the thing with um with like Ukraine, it's like the average person, like man, that thing is so messy. It's so messy because nobody really knows what's going on. Like, like we know where the canonical church is, all that stuff, we get it, right? But like, man, all these people, like when you start thinking about, when you start thinking about how messy the situation is, you're dealing with actual human beings and souls and like, you know, it's really easy for us to to become ideologues and make everything black and white, you know, on our phones, looking at everything. It's different when you're talking about actual people suffering and what that does to them, you know? So well, the, the thing with the the thing with the priest today that happened yeah, and it was like that. I mean, it wasn't the Ukrainian government. It was a guy with a yep. knife who came in yep. and it's like, what's there's like you say like there's a lot like you're it's really principalities and powers at that point right. it's like what motivates this guy and we'll never know because he was shot by the police right and right. that's that's also like that's a good point because i mean so much could probably be laid at our feet whatever by somebody who's looking to lay stuff at our feet of like well you guys talk about you know <laughs> Zelensky's a hard light like projection you know like whatever and like you know you talk about like the 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 jab and the vid and stuff like that but you're ignoring the people who are actually suffering from this stuff and it's like well we're not like superheroes of your whatever they're just going to smash metropolis and don't clean up afterwards like we're still like on this the ground level we're not like superman we're still the people that are like helping people into shelters and stuff like to the extent that we are it's not like we're just like saying this stuff like um what's the, like we're not just saying it just to say it because it sounds edgy it's like no at all times remembering that like these powers and principalities like the the effects that are happening like it still affects everyday people on a grand yeah, scale and i mean that's that's who's being affected yeah that then that's ultimately what our issue is our issue is is that those guys are the people that are being affected yes your guys are stupid little plots and schemes are affecting the everyday man and like who is just trying to you know possibly i mean it is war pigs you know what i mean it is, it is mm-hmm. man it is, is it ever it is, is it war. ever man i i swear sometimes like i would lose my sanity if, it, if I didn't know that God had the last word, and also if I hadn't heard one of the last lines of War Pigs, and it's like begging mercy for their sins, Satan yeah. laughing spreads his wings. It's just like, yeah. man, that is so like. I mean, the whole so... thing, it, it's, it, it is all really, really treacherous. And I mean, I, it, it's, it's a sad thing because um, there's some hard truths that I think, I, there's some hard truths that are really hard <laughs> there's some hard me being redundant there's some hard truths that are very difficult to swallow for instance the state of the church with like you know we are we all long for the day i was just talking about this is the homily this morning like we long for the days of having a, a shepherd like saint ignatius of antioch you know who's just clearly christ loving clearly you know like divide rightly dividing the word of truth and then like we just see 
like the recent Metropolitan that was, you know, <laughs> in Cyprus. It's like, you know, you see these things and it's like, oh my gosh, it's so tempting for it to be dis to be discouraged. But it's like, all this is happening because of our sins. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I said, our sins. I'm not saying that those guys sins over there and, and I'm exempt. No, it's our sins. And it's like God is allowing these things to come because this is this is the purification. This is the 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 wheat and the chaff. This is also to see who the real captains are. You know what I mean? And it's like sure. Metropolitan Neophytus, like none of I would have we would have never known of him. Have never known if things that hadn't have gotten right. right so bad. And it's like things getting so bad. The weakness of the church is when we start seeing the strength of Christ again. And, mm. and the reason why this needed to happen is because of what I was just saying. Like people have lost the savor of Christ. And it was like, all these things came upon the church because the church has been in this place of just being lukewarm. Yeah. Uh, and I, people may like, that's a big statement for this absolute statement. It's like, Hey man, I'll tell you guys a little story. When we first came into the church, I'm not going to name names, but like, you know, it seemed like every time I knew someone who they went over to Greece or over to Russia, you know, or went over to, you know, somewhere in the Near East, they were like coming back and if not leaving the church, definitely being like, I need a break or, or their zeal just brr, gets tanked. Why is that? Because we get over there and some people are like, well, that's what you get for being, you know, naive. I don't think it's naive. I think what it is is people they come in, there's a real zeal and you get over there and then you start seeing in these quote unquote orthodox countries, places it's like, man, uh, I don't know what I thought it was, but it isn't this, right? Is that because, well, you just don't, you don't know what orthodoxy is. I hate hearing that. It's like, I know, I know who Christ is though, because like, I know like where I've come from. You know what I mean? I, how about this? I know what Christ ain't. You know what I mean? And when I'm seeing this, this looks a lot more like what I'm coming from than 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 where I was headed towards Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sure. And that's been the state of Christianity of the church. Obviously, like how can you argue against it? Because if it wasn't the case, God wouldn't be allowing this chastisement to come. I mean, when you read it's, about it's it, it's always it's always the case been the case though, right? There's periods, there's cycles and periods of that of the and church, when, right? When you read it, it's like, oh, we're totally just in one of those times. We're just in one of those times where it's like, and the, the people were sinning greatly. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, okay, yeah, we're just in one of those times. Like that makes sense. And it, it makes sense that like I can legitimately read opinions on Orthodox Christians defending abortion, like defending ecumenism, <laughs> like defending Crazy. like the the the, the right. altering of the Eucharist, you know, and other such blasphemies. It's like, okay, I don't know if you guys have always been around, but like, you know, it seems like. But they have. See, that's the thing. They have been, and that's I think. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. Is that's a big reason why what's happened has happened. Yeah. So those things could be revealed. Yeah. It, but right, but what is it's the apocalypse, everybody, right? So the yeah. apocalypse is like the uncovering, the revelation, right? And so. I think I think that's the thing to really kind of start shifting again because you know now that you know where it's a new year, 2022 was the kind of like um letting something rest before you start agitating it again, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, keeping our eyes on like Christ is that the church. It's like do not become weary. Do not begin to say, like, uh. You know, that was just a thing. Like, don't don't go to sleep because that's exactly like the right now. These moments of seeing the first steps of like the Lavra in Ukraine, like it had its last service a couple of days ago. You know what I mean? Before the um before the government took it over, like we're seeing it start there. But all over the place, there's so many things that can cause us to become discouraged. And we can't. Now's the time to really get um, energized, I think. You know, there, it, there's, go ahead. Oh, it's just, I don't know. It, like, um, what was it? it? Maybe it was a comic, but Captain America was talking about, it's just nice to know who the enemies are. You know, it's just nice to actually, like, see them. Like, because, like, whereas before you had, 
you know, wolves and sheepskin, you know, and everything like that. And that's fine, you know, but like now it's just like, it's just kind of nice to know who the enemy is a little bit. Like I can look and see like, oh yeah, I know, I know that that's wrong. You know, whereas pre 2020 as a borderline ecumenist myself, I would be like, oh, well, you know, but now it's like, no, I know that's wrong. Like that, that's actually a blessing. But I can also see how quickly complacency is already setting back in. Oh yeah. I feel like people that didn't go, that didn't go all the way because father, like exactly as you said, there were so many, I like, I know so many people, so many people have said to me, Oh yeah. The events of the last three years woke me up and let me see how corrupt where the corruption Mm -hmm. is, where the evil really is. And then at the same time, so many of those people who were like, and, and yet I was able to see those are the people who are like aiming toward Christ because they were like, well, it let me actually discern where the light was actually coming from. Mm -hmm. Like to turn in the direction, everything got so dark Mm -hmm. that I could turn in the direction of the real light. Well, here's the thing too. Here's the thing too, because you know, there's this reality of, you know, what happens to the soldier once he comes home, you know, can he get back into society? Right. And so I, I think, I think, this is an interesting time too, because who knows what's, what's next. Right. But it has been a bit of a lull. People started to become complacent again. And I think that that's itself a test because, okay, everyone's excited about being, you know, awakened and all that stuff. Okay. So is it all about fighting the enemy now? Right. Like what about pursuing virtue? You know what I mean? Now that you're awake, it's like, what are you doing? Like, are you pursuing Christ now just to get away from, what you were and just get away from from the the woke baddies and all that stuff you know what i mean there's there's a whole nother thing it's like to some degree in the same in the same sense that the 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 difficult times kind of test them test the metal and really show you who you are peace times can be the same thing too you know what i mean because in the time of peace it's like you know everyone's familiar with this you know uh people running to God when things are tough? Are you running to God when things are good? Are you giving thanks to God? Are you, are you learning to love God and the goodness? Are you learning to be thankful? Because that's what's going to save you, actually. Right? Because God allows the crisis and the temptations to come to wake you up, but it's the means, not the end. The end is that you are in love, and you're in peace, and you're growing in wisdom and virtue, because the kingdom of heaven his kingdom will have no end. We, he's there isn't Christ isn't like Rahm Emanuel. <laughs> you know what I mean? He doesn't need to drum up a crisis to he to facilitate love and attention. He's not like some sicko drama person who needs to like always have some sort of crisis. That's not Christ, right? So I think that's something to really take in mind because you know if everything is in the lens of and of fighting and and there's a place for it right but the book of ecclesiastes there's a season for everything you know i mean a season for time season of war and like i just worry that you know if people come in and then you know it's like that's great this is that we there's a definite problem all this and that but but then what because that's that's about staying in the church and that's about preparing for eternity because it's not it's are you falling in love with the liturgy? You know what I mean? Are you, are, are you, are you growing in those ways also? You know what I'm saying? Like, let me just share this one story real quick. Please forgive me. But um, there was, in fact, I'll read it to you right now. It's, it's, it's incredible, right? There's a nun and she was the spiritual daughter of one of the Optina elders, right? And um, it says here, it says, um, at the Baleb convent, there lived a schema nun, Mother Paulina's sister. She had many sorrows in her life. She lived an exemplary life, and after some time, she reposed. Sometime later, a nun who loved her and wished to know her fate in the next life, after earnest prayer, saw her in a dream. The reposed one was sitting in a lovely room in unusually bright light, but nevertheless looked unhappy. 
When asked why she was not happy, she answered, it is well with me, but it would be incomparably better if I could see the face of God, and this has not permitted me. I did not bear afflictions without murmuring, and in order to see the face of God, when the rod of afflictions pierce one's heart, one must carry one's cross unmurmuringly to the end. Wow. Like, okay. Yeah. And so there's just, there's just, there's levels to this, man. You know what I mean? There's levels mm -hmm. to this. And I'm all about like, let's, okay, good. We know what's up, right? You know, find Christ. He's the heat. He's the light. He's, he's how you discern. But then what? Well, now you start to grow. And that's why, you know, one of the, one of the hallmarks of like maturity in the faith is, are you constantly talking about Protestant versus that, you know, or you start uh -huh. talking about temptations? Are you talking about what it means to be in the spiritual life, prayer, like all these different things, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you want to start moving towards, right? Because ideally, I mean, and I think this is part of what we experienced here in Kansas City. It's like, we started getting to the point where we forgot, like in the in the good way, like oh, the rest of the world is crazy right. because we had our we had our arc, we had our arc where our children weren't wearing masks and like having to feel weird. You know what I mean? We and it wasn't like we, there was this really sweet spot for us. I was I remember like we weren't even really caring so much about like sometimes I would talk to some of the moms and they'd be like, "Father, I forgot." And I like, yes, like to have a mother forget, that was to me one of those moments where I felt really um, blessed as a priest. And I was like, thank you, God. And like, if it's allowed, I felt like I was not failing. I'll put it that way. I wouldn't say I was doing a good job, but I wasn't failing. You because were messing up as bad. Messing up as <laughs> bad, right? When I would hear moms kind of get shocked because they would forget, oh, we're in the middle of this whole like crazy pandemic wokey thing, right? I was like, yeah, because we were we were so focused on just Christ and being together in the church. You know what I'm saying? It was like yeah. that that's the thing instead of always been focused on how bad everything is and like, you know, all oh, these uh, sick of seeing and like, yeah, every once in a while, yeah, I talk about how sick you are of seeing people, you know, be alone in a car with a mask. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem. You know what I mean? You, you gotta address reality. You gotta address reality. You gotta pin you gotta pinch yourself every once in a while. Like, yeah. okay, yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? But it's just, it's not the totality of everything. And I think just mm -hmm. keeping that balance is important because that's where Christ is. Because, you know, mm -hmm. it isn't about always, let us not be ignorant of the wiles of the devil, for sure. St. Paul, for sure. But the real thing is like keeping our, our focus on Christ and being like, he's the head man. Because cause here's the thing. Uh, I imagine things could get bad again. And not just in the mm -hmm. world, but even just, more rounds of just like disappointment with hierarchs you know what i mean yeah. like yeah. i can just so so that's the thing what are we going to do if you start seeing more you know what if there's some weird issue that comes up and just there's another failing where it's just like oh man like no that's not it right we don't once you're in the church there's nowhere else to go guys so because of that like we learn to be like okay now we're with christ now, yeah. now we're with Christ, you know. I I had to say, Father, really quick, because I think Cyprian has something to say too. That yeah. like when Cyprian a couple of weeks ago linked, it was a Twitter thread uh, about Kanye, and I think it was when he specifically told everyone to stop watching porn mm -hmm. or get rid of their porn, and then watching. I would scroll down the. Oh yeah, yeah, all those responses. And yeah. I was like, I was literally disturbed. Like, I felt like I got my bell rung afterwards. People were like defending to the death their right to look at porn and to like in, 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 consume porn. And like, um, I, that was one of those moments of like, I'm definitely in a bubble. Like, I'm just surrounded more or less, more or less. Yeah, I. This is what I'm saying. Like, I am. I'm very thankful because hearing someone talk that brashly and that boldly about just sin just acquiescing completely to their lesser nature to you know to the, to the nature of the demons like was like something i was not used to i'm not used well, to it puts the fear of god in me because i was one of those people at one point in my life sure oh yeah you know I, I mean, mean and so, i don't i don't know how i would have handled this without christ and it's 
why ain't nothing but a crooked letter can't be made straight. So there's no point like really trying to figure out why things happen the way that they did. But like, it is really nice to be able to sit and be like, okay, yeah, I, I'm glad that things worked out the way that they did because you know, it's where I am now. So, um, but. Well, this is the, I mean, I, I think that this is the, what you're, what you're talking about there, Andrew, is is what Father was talking about earlier, sort of related to Andrew Tate and his thing with Islam, right? And it's just like this principle writ large where it's like, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to try to look for the ideology, mm-hmm. religion, whatever you want to call it, that already matches. Sure. Like exactly what my, my moral framework and is going to back me up. And the unfortunate part is that like, they're there. It doesn't matter how terrible. I mean, this like things like, I mean, things that get so things have gotten so far, like, you know, the fact that you have people in academia, professional people, supposedly who are in tenured professors at four year, you know, universities talking about minor attracted persons, maps, yeah. mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And they're like, well, this is just a sexual preference. And it's like, how far? How far are we going? Like, because what these folks are doing is that they're it's like, who are who are you doing this for? Like, who who are you serving here? It's that's and that's the question that's not asked. But it's like you're serving Christ. You know, Christ is going to call you out. Like, it's like, nope, that's not the way. But I think I think people cannot. Because the difficult part is people don't want to, I I think, I think, and, and this is the feeling that I've gotten as I've, as I've spoken to various people, you know, kind of light conversation, but sometimes when it gets deep, the underlying feeling that I get is it's like, yes, I would, they're like, I can feel them saying like, yeah, I can see that this is something good for you, mm-hmm. but if I was, I saw the same thing with me moving to Saipan and I still see it with people that I know who are like, oh, but the industry that I'm in is in this city or this city. Mm-hmm. And I've worked so hard on my career. Mm-hmm. And like, I know that I shouldn't be here, but if I left, mm-hmm. if I actually oriented in the right place, like what would be left of me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's a big thing. Yeah, that's a re- I mean, me? that's a real thing. And, and that gets back to like, why, you know, this kind of spiritual principle of learning not to complain it's like that's that need that's like i think one of the key things that becomes a defining trademark or hallmark of uh, an orthodox christian's maturity how often are they complaining like we all struggle but like if someone's always vocally complaining about something they're really immature you know like they they need to really rise up because you don't realize that ultimately like those things are from god like yeah. your circumstances are from God. And so the, the thing is, is that when you begin to realize that, then what you do and how you do it becomes less and less of the sacrifice. It becomes more about obedience. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Because yeah. And isn't I, that the definition of faith? Isn't that the very definition yeah, of it's faith? Trust. It's this trust. Yeah. You know, this is this is why it's it's interesting to me when I'm looking at someone like, you know, like um like MIA, right? And her recent, like, you know, it, it's interesting to me because like wait, what's going on with MIA? Like MIA's her whole thing, and like she, she had this encounter with Christ. Oh. She's like, I know Jesus is real. She's like, I don't know what it means. I have no idea how that plays out, you know. Cause she's not like she's not doing the whole like Christian music circuit. She's not, she's just like, I had this and she's oh, she's like, you know, like I'm I'm I was a Hindu. She's like, <laughs> I, I just I don't even know what it means. I just know I had this account. I know Jesus is real, whatever. And it and it's definitely different than um, Rygar guy. You know what I mean? But the reason why I bring it up is because you know, I saw I saw this article. She's talking about how you know she's had controversy in the past, but nothing nothing has even compared to her espousing a belief in 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 Christ. And I find that interesting because she's basically saying like I don't really care. I'm just gonna toe the line. And she's not saying she's going to become like anything else than just like, this is what I understand. This is what I've experienced. To me, that's really interesting because when you have seemingly everything, 
and you're willing to say publicly, like, yeah, I don't think kind of really don't care, you know, that makes me go like, that's, that's really interesting. Now, someone that's, say, isn't that what Kanye's sounds doing? Real. It sounds, it it sounds the real. It sounds real. It's of being real. For that's sure. right. And that's why when someone says, well, isn't that what Kanye said? I said, yeah. And that's why Kanye for me was way, I followed him. I followed him down the rabbit hole way more than I did Andrew Tate because I'm like, you know, again, like I said earlier, there's the suffering thing and there's that component of like, I don't really care what it's going to cost me. I fo like follow that stuff because when you like truth is a person, right? So when you encounter that truth of Christ, it's like, even if it's not in the sense that we, you know, um, have experienced it, like, how could it be? Because we're Orthodox, like, <laughs> we are orthodox christians which means like it's not like we have the kind of oldest or the best it's like we have the faith like we 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 are in the kingdom of, of of christ you know what i mean and we are watching others who are not in the kingdom but they're they're on the borders or in the hinterlands right and so we're looking to see what the king is going to do with them right but that but that reality doesn't really matter as long as we have our eye on what we need to have our eye on, which is in this case, learning not to complain because these things that are coming, the things that, the things that woke up Kanye, the things that woke up whoever it might, whatever, for us, they no longer are about being woken up. Now they're about growth, right? Now they're about like, okay, that's for my salvation. Okay. This is for my the growth of my virtue. It takes on a different characteristic. It's not like it goes away, right? It's not like we begin to act like everything's okay, right? Or begin to justify stuff. We just recognize her for what it is, the purification process, you know? It's got a it's got a sense of permanence to mm -hmm. it. To where you're just like, well, this is not, this is an ongoing process rather than, oh, this is novel. Mm -hmm. This right. is this is, oh, this is new. Oh. I've got a new revelation. Now it's like, no. It's still, it's all still coming, mm -hmm. but, but this is permanent now. This is forever. This is going to be happening forever. Now. I was just talking with my wife about this. Mm. I was just talking about this with her. Cause I was talking about how, um, there's like, um, I don't know exactly the conversation went, but I was talking about how I remember like trying when I became Orthodox, I was at this time in my life where I was finally like really accomplishing some stuff. I was doing things differently. I was working out. I was taking ADHD medicine. I was doing well in college. And I was like, okay, fine. This stuff is done. I'm getting it done. And I remember when I had my encounter with Christ and I started to like, actually like started to approach the church. I was like, okay, what do I need to do to get this asceticism thing done? Like, what do I need to do to get it done and out of the way? Cause I don't want to worry about it anymore because ultimately what I want to do is still just be left alone. Like I want to be able to check the boxes and put it down and, and put it neatly in its little cubby that it got done. And I, I experienced that life event. I did that life thing. It's done now, blah, blah, blah. But this doesn't have to be a day in and day out. What do I have to do to make this thing stick where I can move on with my life and not have to worry about the struggle every day? You know, like that, that's, that was, and I feel like, I feel like a lot of times zeal according to knowledge rather than experience comes from a place of that, of just like, I would like to get this done. Let's get this done. What's the book I got to read? What's the equation I got to do? What's the prayer rule I got to do to get so that the key unlocks and then boom, I can move on. I'm holy. We're good to go. You know, yeah, you like get your holy diploma. You I get, get your my holy my certificate. Holy you walk across the stage. Diploma. That's exactly <laughs> what that's exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> and it was pretty heartbreaking when I realized that that's not the case here. Like that this is going to be a day. And like as far as the complaining thing goes, I'm the last person that should really be talking about this, except for the like when th the chips are down. If maybe this will help someone, I don't know if it will, but like there's no time to complain. It's counterproductive. It actually sets it back a little. It actually makes it harder. And I've noticed this with people who get angry when they're in the there's middle. There's no, there's no benefit in complaining whatsoever. No, it it the, the doesn't. complaining doesn't have any benefit except for perhaps a nanosecond of like relief. Because sure. there, there is a measure of like you know I ow okay you relief but like the trade off though father yeah no. I mean because because the thing is complaining takes a measure of like will to do like you have to engage your will to complain. You yeah. have to engage your intellect to complain. You have to formulate what's going on. And 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 ultimately complaining 
is a fruit of pride because you still don't see like what the situation is. You know Which what I mean? Is, like, no, like you I just see how you have your very myopic view of it and you foolishly think like this is it. It's always going to be this way and it's not the way I want it to be. So therefore, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, that's yeah. not man there's some there's some real synergy happening here because this is a conversation i just had with my wife like last night and like not only that but like i see it and i've experienced it i've seen it and i've experienced it that when you complaining things start getting worse like things really start yeah. getting like it throws well, you Well, start creating the reality for that too and i know people are like whoa 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 new age father no no it's not new age it's oh, your father's talking career. about law of attraction he's speaking it into existence he's lighting incense <laughs> and putting Secret, the crystals baby. out the secret <laughs> You He's know, the crystals the secret, out. let me get in my, let me get in my Bukati. Uh, <laughs> no, man, it's, it's great book. Our thoughts determine our lives, you know, or if you want, just read, read more than like, you know, a paragraph of St. Paisius and you'll get it. Like read some Porfirios, you'll get it. Like the, the reality of us hedging our view and our perspective in such a way that our thoughts begin to become receptors for demonic energy right that's what happens and then when your thoughts are like the receptors and the, the receivers right the receiving demonic energy then that begins to you know put impressions and and move your behaviors and when those move those behaviors become habitual enough then you have passions and then now you're a person who's miserable and you cause misery everywhere right yeah. so yeah. that that's that's how that works you know um <laughs> I do have a question, Father. Questions? So, uh, <laughs> I forgot we're answering questions. Uh, well, no, well, we haven't answered one single audience question so far. Yeah, I don't think we're okay. gonna. I don't think we're gonna make it to questions. No, <laughs> next week, next week, folks. I'll get some. I'll get some bangers too because we've got some bangers lined up. So, what's the difference between that and, um, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Do you know what I mean, Father? Like, because that's like, not complaining. That's not complaining. See when the Lord when the Lord calls us out, there's a mystery that's there. Which I mean, who am I? I'm I'm obviously a bad broken priest. That's how we started off, but um, understand that the humanity, because Christ is perfectly human and perfectly God, and the humanity, the experience of separation, right? Christ is experiencing this in the same sense that we experience it in the fall, right? Now Christ is not participating in our sin, right? but he knows our pain and that pain and that kinship, that's how we're able to follow him, right? This is, this is one of the temptations the devil lays out in regards of like always challenging either his divinity or his humanity. Right? Oh, okay. The devil's okay. always doing that with one of the, with, with, with the heresies. Right. But the thing is, is that that cry, Eloi, Eloi, Lema Sabtani, right. Ama Sabakani, like that is really, his you look at it this way it's i'm not saying this in an exclusive absolute like exhaustive way one of the ways to understand that is the hum, like that is the human this that is christ take being the new adam right encapsulating all of what the fallen what fallen adam is experiencing and the anguish of us being separated being cast out of paradise you know what i mean and in that cry we we see ourselves right? And we now can see Christ in our life, right? Because everything is about finding that place in which you have that fellowship with Christ. And that's one of those great moments where not great as in happy, but great as in monumental. When you begin to experience holy despair, that weird despair is this weird thing, like never do it. It's a bad thing, but there's like a kind of holy despair that St. Sophroni talks about, where it's this you know, going into the depths of hell and despairing not and, and recognizing that even in the midst of the absolute, because that experience of hell that many saints have and that we can have ourselves to some degree and do have ourselves, even if I'm in hell, you're there with me, right? There is this weird mystery intention that we feel the separation of God, but we despair not, right? So there's these weird there's this, there's this mystery that's there, but that's what that's about. It isn't. Um, yeah. I, I guess I just was, because there is a way to cry out to God and be like, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I can't remember exactly what Saint was talking about it or something, 
but it was like it was like a what the heck you know like what the heck god you know not like it's not complaint you know like i I think another way to look at is like lamenting like okay complaining complaining isn't good because complaining getting back to your time complaining complaining implies a measure of judgment like you're you're making a judge a statement like this is this thing it's terrible and essentially saying like god you don't know what you're doing yeah right versus lamenting is like lord this is terrible that this has happened look at the sin of us as a people well look you know what i mean lamenting recognizes that i have brought christ into this you know but he's also here with me that god is suffering with me as well that we're and like we as an orthodox christian you need to learn to lament you need to learn to mourn you need to learn to face the horror like being orthodox is not is not a, in fact it's it if you are acting like there's nothing wrong, you're not really orthodox. Oh man, I'm telling but you lamenting that. is participatory in that way. Like you have agency, you're participating with you're participating with God. Whereas complaining is something is happening to you. You are not a participant. You do not have agency in what's going on. Which, Father, you you saying, you know. You you a, a few minutes ago you really opened up something for me about and and I, I maybe want to if we could dig into it a little more but just this idea of Christ his human nature having to move through a, a, a human experience mm-hmm. as we move through it otherwise we couldn't follow him mm-hmm. that's like that's so it's so obvious <laughs> like that's so obvious but yet it's like so, there's such a mystery there and that just opened up for me like oh of course why why he's perfectly perfectly human and perfectly mm-hmm. divine like it's of course he would have to be otherwise we could follow him and we are following him mm-hmm. so like it's it seems like it's just like it's self-evident but that's yeah he tries doesn't destroy human nature he redeems it yeah this is yeah. so missing from this is so missing from the conception of Christ in Protestantism. Mm-hmm. So yeah. missing from the yeah. conception of Christ in Protestantism. Bingo. I ask I ask people all the time, like, how did and like this is just kind of a way to get the foot in the door, but the people I counsel are primarily Protestant. And I'm like, how did Christ becoming incarnate? And first off, a lot of people are like, what is, what is incarnate? Like they haven't heard that because that's not a word that's commonly thrown around the Protestant church, but like, how did Christ becoming incarnate save us? Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, and you know, a lot of times it's like, you know, he, he died for us. I'm, okay. But how did that, how did that benefit us? Like, in what way does well, that, that gets them, them into the whole thing of like, he, he died in like, in place of me because God was so mad and hated me then. And I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, no like right away like no that's not it there's a lot of acceptable answers to this question and that ain't one of them like that's not one of them and well that's what gave birth to atheism well yeah yeah, i mean that's that's not exactly like i'm not cool with that god like that's not a god that like i'm interested in worshiping like that's but it also doesn't make sense like it, this, no. this, is, this has been the most important thing for me with orthodoxy, right? Especially like with the spiritual background that I have, like, you know, formal education and philosophy, all of this. It's like what I understood as Christianity. The thing is, it didn't even make sense to where I was like this. There's no I was like, there's no spiritual system mm-hmm. here. It doesn't lock into place. It doesn't. The deeper I dig, there's nothing there. Yeah. Whereas mm-hmm. with orthodoxy, it's like just like just like what happened just now, Father. Where it's like, oh, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Like, just a little you peel mm-hmm. one layer, and you're like, oh yeah, that may, it, the deeper you peel, the more sense it makes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? you know what's funny? This is this is this is for me. This is a funny thing because it's it is it's one of those absolute statements. But I. <laughs> I don't, I've never experienced or known or read about someone leaving orthodoxy because of a lack of truth. People leave orthodoxy or don't become orthodox because of their own personal hangup. There's something, there's some weird 
kind of something's broken. They have a hang up. There's some sort of like ideology. There's some sort of identity thing. There's something there, you know, that they don't want to give up. That they don't want to. They don't want to give that thing up, and they that, know that they exactly. will have to give it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I get that because get because that. the thing is, is like it's it's it like it's truth. Like orthodoxy is the truth. It's not even so. Which and that's why it can be sometimes so frustrating because it's like <clears throat> the truth is so evident. Mm -hmm. But for people who are like you know. You know, like we, we all have loved ones who like maybe are still evangelical or whatever. And so like you don't understand, you know, why they're still there. But it's like, well, I'll tell you why they're still there, because there's something a lot of times it's they don't want to give up their autonomy. They don't want to give up their position or they don't want to give up their sin. Like there's there's things that you can do outside. Of, there's things that you can do and gravitate towards. Outside of orthodoxy that like just even looking at the church, you know, you can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, it makes them go like, nah, nah. And so they start doing all these mental gymnastics with doctrine and scripture to be like, no, nah, that's not the truth. But it's like, yeah, if you really follow these, these conclusions down the line, right, this is why people end up always having to be in like, you know, these weird debates and stuff like that. It's because they're still looking for something. I'm talking about Protestant um, apologetics guys. Like, it, it's an interesting thing, right? Like, there's a place for apologetics. You know, there's a place for it. But what I find so, and someone say, well, it's because you're orthodox. But like, okay, here's the thing. When you see someone doing the, the apologetics thing as a Protestant, it's like, it's, 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 it's like watching someone kind of chase their tail a little bit. Mm -hmm. But when someone's, when there's an orthodox apologist, Generally speaking, you know, it's it's just them standing their ground on something. Do you do you see the difference? It's like there isn't a searching of something. Like and citing they're citing the fathers. It's just they're like, citing the fathers, they're citing scripture. Yeah. And they're yeah. they're they're citing the fathers, they're citing scripture, they're citing philosophy, there's they're citing common sense, they're citing everything because it's just the truth. But there's this like, look, this is what this is, and, and there's a there's just a stance of there's a foundation there. Whereas these these uh, evangelical and even Roman Catholic apologists, it's like there's this chasing of something. Do you the understand circular, what I'm The circular logic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Circular, circular. logic. They're searching yeah. for something. That, and it's like, you know, and then when you see them not have that is when they're now up against something false, right? So I'll give you a good example. There's this cat vocab alone, whatever. I like him because he's really good at like getting down with these Hebrew Israelite guys, right? It's good. And he... And when he's dealing with them, it's like he's now on that strong footing, right? Because he's speaking in the truth that the measure of truth that he has, which is true, right? And he's just which is so much more than they have. So it's which no is so problem. much more than yeah. they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. But there was this thing when he was trying to fool with the Orthodox, and it was like, and then it was like the same way he kind of yucks on the Hebrew Israelites guys for like not making sense and, and talking in circles. It's like now he was that guy. He was the guy talking in circles and yucking, you know, getting yucked around because now he was having to chase, you know, chase the depth. And that that's what I find so compelling. That's what we all that's why we converted. That's why we converted, because it was so compelling. You know what I mean? And because you come to these truths, which are timeless, you know, universal. They're true. Yeah. They're not subjective to like what I like, you know, does this fit? my personality type like quite the opposite like that's i think what's so compelling about all of us as converts is that and maybe that's part of what's compelling about like us as a project here is like people can look at us and be like okay you guys definitely don't fit like the orthodox church it's like yeah that's kind of the point is that we've decided to bow our knee to the church because it, it is the truth you see what i'm saying yeah that's what's compelling about all this and that was something i was going to say earlier that was like a key indication where there's a major course deviation for me is Andrew Funk as a human, you know, as a person was like, I remember I was like pretty early on, I would say in my catechism mm -hmm. and I was praying to be delivered from something, something difficult. I can't remember what it was, probably something at work. And I was kind of praying. I was like, you know, kind of help me get through this. And like, for the first time, like a thought popped in my head. It's like, why? So you can keep going back to what you're doing before. Mm -hmm. And like, I remember listening 
for the first time, I was like, wait a minute, there's a truth to that. Like there's something going on there because that is, I do just want to get, I want to be left alone. Like I want this thing to go away so I can continue to just be left alone. And like, that was also, you know, what my ex brother-in-law, he told me that one time he was like, you know, he fancied himself a very smart man. And I guess he was to an extent. He's like, yeah, I mean, and a hardened atheist, but he was like, yeah, I've, I've looked into Orthodox theology. It's unbelievably solid. I was like, hmm, well, imagine that, you know, like, isn't that crazy, right? Like, 2,000 years, 2,000 years, yeah. 2,000 years and still going strong, baby. Like, like, you know, and he would throw jabs and everything, but, you know, like, he was like, yeah, no, I mean, everything It's so solid. Up. You know how solid it is? Orthodoxy is so solid, it can even weather bad bishops. <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean sure. that's yeah. how that's how solid it is it can weather bad priests it can weather yeah it, you know what i mean it can weather scandals it can weather all that that's how solid it is and, and always has right because that's the thing people forget all the heretics they heretics don't come outside the church they're from within sure mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're from yeah. within you know so like that's how solid it is so that's you know it's like i remember getting back to that guy well, Cat Malone, it's like, there was this time, I think it was even when he was talking with, um, I can't remember, I think he was talking with, with one of my buddies, a brother priest, but he's like, well, there's all well, these heretics that were in, these heretics that were in the Orthodox Church, and it was like, yeah, dummy, because <laughs> heresy isn't something outside, it's from within, right? It's like, and it's always been that way, you know what I mean? And, and it's part of the proof text, if you will, of like, why this is the truth and why it is so solid, you know? Yeah. So we sh that's why you know it's it's that's that's the kind of like digital you know gangster glasses that gets put on you know like <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you know what I mean that's what it is because it's like that's how that that's our that's our level up right there because because even <laughs> even the the thing that kills us that's the cross right that's the cross mm -hmm. like the cross. The devil thought the world powers, the 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 principalities, the demonic powers, they thought that that was the end. And it was like, no, that's that's your fatal move, man. Your fatal move is when you think you're about to kill us, that's when we rise up. So that's why this thing mm. with Ukraine, with that priest today, some of these other things, it's like, hey, let's have the right view of these things. Let's yeah. let's let's lament, let's mourn, let's not complain though, because mm. The, the 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 move the devil always makes you're talking Silomon brought that up today it's like yeah man you think that you're gonna like hurt us by beginning to kill us but like all that's gonna do is spread the contagion we're the contagion yeah right? we're we're the real contagion we're the terrorists in that sense we're the sure. ones you got to worry about the ones who get their blood spilled not the ones who spill the blood the ones who get their blood spilled because that's how the church grows the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And those who are willing to lay their lives down and those who like, that's how the, the seed is spread. Well, right? St. Juliana is commemorated today here since it's, it's, I'm a day ahead of you. And it was in her torture that what, what was it? F 500 men and 150 women witnessing all profess Christ. They were all beheaded and baptized in their own blood. And it's like, Whoa, it's like <laughs> one young virgin just being like no i will not submit to your pagan ways mm -hmm. and it's like talk about a contagion mm -hmm. and then and then it even says that the governor was like i don't know how to contain this that was even he what he even said he said i don't know how to contain I this to contain like, i don't know what to do <laughs> that's it that's it so it's just like and that it's it's about us just really knowing who we are which that i mean that gets back i think it's like the last episode we the um, letter from Diogeny, Diogenes, I think it was, mm -hmm, right? We yeah. talked, it's like, it's just knowing who we are. Like, who are we? This is who we are. Like, mm -hmm. everyone's looking for identity. Like, we are the people who should not have identity issues. We are the people who should mm -hmm. not be bummed out and complaining. We are, we are the people who should also not be going along with everything. Like, we are the people who should be, if the world is like rejoicing and in, in whatever, we're mourning. If the world is lost and confused, we're solid. If the world is, you know, in an uproar, we're at peace. We are. We always are the opposite of what the world is doing. Not because we're edgy, not because we're contrarian, but because we know who we are. We're yeah. Christians. 
And, and yeah. we, we, when the world hates that name, we embrace it. Right. And when the well, world father, tries to. I think this is also, forgive me. I think that this is also, you know, if you want to talk about the difference between Andrew Tate and Kanye to sort of, mm -hmm. to sort of bring it to that, the difference is a willingness to, like you say, it's the willingness to give up because we have to, right? Our salvation is in killing the old man, like that the old man has to die, mm -hmm. right? And I think that this is the difference is that I, I think Kanye is someone who's much, ha, who has shown much more a willingness to die and be reborn, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Like, and, mm -hmm. and, and to where he actually, whether he's willing to do it now, mm -hmm. right now, but he consciously understands that that is the pattern mm -hmm. rather than, I mean, Andrew, for Andrew Tate to be Orthodox, every single thing that he's doing, he would have oh, to, God, yeah. yeah, every, that, every single aspect of him has to go. Yeah. That that's something. And I, I forgive me. This is just something I want to talk about. So it is what it is, but I, I think I've asked before, if you guys have read the mask of the red death by Edgar Allan Poe, Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Father. Mm -mm. So the premise of the story is, is that there's this, uh, the red death going over the land, right. And all the rich people basically get together and they hold themselves up in a castle, right. To avoid the red death. And it's this famine or it's this disease rather that's killing after everybody. They all hold themselves up in this. And basically they have this huge castle and it's a nonstop party and they're going to ignore the red death and it'll be fine everything will be fine um but the thing is is like every time they're having this huge dance there's food and drink and everything like that um every time the bell the uh, uh the clock chimes on an hour everyone stops and looks at it like subconscious they don't mean to do it and like the musicians stop the server stop serving you know every you know the one bartender is like pouring the wine and it's falling over the side of the cup stuff like that type of stuff and it's as long as the bell is ringing nobody will like nobody will do anything and then once it stops everyone laughs and it's like <laughs> that's crazy like we're not going to do that again next time like don't worry about that like mm -hmm. you know that you know sure. it's, it's it's yeah so and then and then it happens again every single time every single time and i've noticed that like it is what it is but the orthodox people the the people who are like looking are the people who like you might even find yourself at that party you know, but like you're the people who don't start, like, start laughing again afterwards. Like, like yeah. that's the people that's like, no, I'm going to remember that. Like, I'm going to remember and I am going to react the same way next time. I know because this is the truth. Mm -hmm. Like this other stuff that's going on is not the truth. So the reason I say that is because, Father, you talked about people backing off from the church because of their sin or whatever. That's that laughing, mm -hmm. at, at least the way that I see it. And I, I could be off base, but like that's the way that I'm seeing things is the like, that whole like you know when someone does something really awkward at like a dinner party and one one person's like ah you know like smiling and laughing to try and like it's okay it'll be okay it's not a big deal like don't worry about this thing that happened over here like that to me is just like it's such a turnoff because it's just like it is this thing happened i mean it happened let's look at it and not flinch away from it you know it's like when someone starts crying in a public in a public area like look at the reactions of the people around them you know like and then well, you it's it's interesting forgive me because it's it's we you know we um we we touched on it when i was saying you know um uh cyprian did that great 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 interview with um buck on um uh buck uh, buck johnson on um the covid amnesty amnesty yeah, yeah. man everyone if you haven't seen if you haven't listened to that go listen to that it's 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 an incredible um incredible uh discussion but we kind of touched on this and that, and I think uh, a while ago about this reality of like, you know, this kind of conversation, what it means. But the one thing I want to say about it, because there's nothing I can add to it that Buck and Cyprian didn't already touch on. But the one thing I want to add to it is like, it's just a one more kind of indictment in, in the sense that that's kind of what we all kind of saw at the beginning anyways was like a doubling down all these things, but an, 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 an not an inability, an unwillingness to see the thing for what it is and be like, okay, yeah. And the reason why I, I want to say that like that is, it's just one of the many ways 
but it's a still distinct way of the world being like, this is why I hate Christ. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because because he reveals that. Because he reveals he that. On he yeah. reveals that. Because because he's truth. Because he is truth. <laughs> because he he's truth. <laughs> he reveals that. And, and and here's the thing, like that may not seem like a that may not seem profound to anyone else, but to me it's profound because I see people where I go like, you know, God have mercy on them, man. And let's turn around on something. It's like you're in a bad spot because you think that you're wrestling with you know, Trumpers or, you know, like when you think you're, you're even like with Wokies, like you think you're wrestling with something, but you're actually wrestling with Christ, man. Yeah. And that's, that's scary because no matter who you are, where you're at, he's calling you to repent of something. That's the thing that people I think need to really get in their minds too, is like, it's not like, this is kind of what I was saying earlier. If you think that, being orthodox and being Christian and being all that is just about getting like on the right side of the team, the right ideology, you're missing it. Because let's just say you get all the check boxes, boom. I got all the, I'm in the right jurisdiction. I, I'm voting for the right guy. I got the right swag. Like whatever you think your thing is, there's going to be something where Christ is like, okay, great. Um, Now I'll sell everything you have and come and follow. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that that's always going to be there. And that's why this kind of incessant, like don't have your pet project. Don't have your pet thing mm. is super important because like, if you have that, that's going to be the thing that that's, that's going to be the thing that you're going to get called out on. And we, we are not those, we're, we're not supposed to be those people. You know what I mean? So, I remember father early on in my catechism, there was an exchange that you and I had where I said, I said something like, "I'm in. I'm willing to do what I'm willing to do whatever it takes." And you, you started laughing, laughing, <laughs> and you said, "Don't, don't, don't say it if you don't, don't mean it. it. Don't yeah. say it if you don't mean it." And I, and you know, the thing is, I meant it. Yeah. I, I, I did mean it, but, but I had also, I think I. And it wasn't even that I prepared myself. I think Christ had great mercy on me and prepared me over a long period of time of taking things away, mm -hmm. right? And of, of, of allowing, it was a great mercy that I was allowed to like, to feel, to, to feel it was right to give up these things of the world, mm -hmm. right? That it, that it wasn't like all at once, like, okay, here it is all at once, give it all up to where I was in a state where I was like, well, it's already been given up. So there's nothing holding me back. Yeah. And I think that was a great, like, so much mercy. As I look at it now, it's like, oh, so much mercy. Because so much mercy. had he caught me <laughs> five years before yeah. that, I would have been like, get out of here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, his no timing way. is, I mean, he's the fisherman. Right. Like, what's he do? He teaches, right. look, he's right. the one who teaches people to fish. He's not the one that's asking for tips. You know what I mean? Right. He's not the one asking for tips. He's the one saying, look, man, I'll put your net here. Men. Wow. Put your knows. net here. Right. Because, wow. you know, I, I was just, I was just saying this in a homily a couple of weeks ago, but it's like, look, we can get in this place where we got it dialed in. Right. Because that's what happened. They've been fishing all night. Peter and then they're fishermen. That's what they did. That's what their daddy did. That's probably what their granddaddy did. And they're coming out and the Lord's like, hey, did you catch anything? No, nah, we're out all day. He's not mad about it. Peter's not mad about it. He's like, yeah, we, we're out all night. We didn't catch one. No problem. We'll, we'll go back out. And the Lord's like, no, nah, no, nah, go back out. He's like, huh? Now here's the thing. Peter's good, man. He obeys. He obeys. And he goes back out, right? And I think this is super key because Peter could have easily been like, nah, listen, I know what fishing. You know? What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? Carp carpenter, You're a carpenter, carpenter, bro. <laughs> like, if you want to make me a boat, I'll listen to you. You know what I mean? But fishing, that's my deal. But he's like, okay. And this is the, this is what I was saying in the homie. It's like we can be like, I did my prayer rule. I did this. I found the right church. I found the church that isn't you know woke. I I, I did all the things, which is that's good. That's good. You know, that's good. But here's the thing. 
once you've done all that, what happens when the Lord says, well, actually go and cast your net again. What are you going to do? Are you now going to tell him, no, 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 you don't understand, Lord. I, t I checked all the, I checked all the boxes. See, I I'm in, I'm, in, I'm right where I need to be. He's like, okay, that's great. I'm not saying you're not, but cast it out again. Cause here's the thing. Do you want to catch fish? You know what I'm saying? Cause Peter wasn't in crisis. Right. But the Lord's like, no, nah, I'm, Forgive me. This is as this is about as prosperity gospel as I'll get. Right? There is nothing but abundance in the Lord. But what people miss is it's it's what's the what's the real abundance? The Lord doesn't fool around with things that are gonna be eaten by moth and rust. He's not gonna mess around with that. He's trying to give you something that's gonna be eternal and an abundance of it. Right? And that's where we have to learn some of these things we're talking about because it's not about. Being a good, I mean, yes, it's good to be a good soldier and all that stuff. But like the thing is about complaining and this other stuff is you don't actually start to see the fruit. You don't see the good food that God's trying to give you. That's the problem. You know what I'm saying? Because the Lord's like, here, take this. And you're like, no, I don't want that. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, um, you know, it's a bad analogy in this sense. Well, well, well. I'll try. I'll try the reverse of it. It's like the guy, he finds himself, you know, in some kind of like jungle area, or whatever, and he's like, "Listen, listen, you know, I got a hundred bucks. What do you give me for this hundred bucks?" And then you know, the guy from the jungle, whatever, he's like, "Well, I have water here. I have this very good meat that you know what I mean." He's like, "Well, what is that piece of paper gonna gonna do for me?" You know what I mean? Actually. Let me rip this up, use it for kindling, start a fire for you, and let me show you what's really good. You know what I'm saying? It's like we have these things we think is so great, and it's like God's like, that's not that's not really going to get you anywhere. That's not going to do anything for you. Let me show you. Let me show you how to fish. Let me show you where the bounty is. But, you know, with our opinions and our stuff, we, we want to tell God, no, nah, you don't know what's going on. Let me tell you what's going on. And it's like, God is so merciful and, such a, and so kind and meek. You know, that he's like, okay, I mean, you know, it's, I'll sit with you if you want, but at the end of the day, it's like, this is not what you think it is, you know? There's, there's like this panel in Superman where Lex is playing Superman in a, in a uh, game of chess. Mm. And like, um, they just got off the big adventure. Lex Luthor tried to kill Superman again. And he's sitting there with like a huge, like, you know, like ankle monitor on like Lex's. And he tells like, Superman, he's like, you know, I could have killed you if I really wanted to. Superman's like, sure, Lex. Sure, you could have, buddy. Like, yeah. sure, you know. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Yeah. Like, that's, like, and I forget, like, Father told me a couple of weeks ago, he he was like, God gives rest to those he loves. Mm -hmm. And about a week after that, I stopped getting rest because, like, my son started waking up and I haven't more and more problems getting to sleep. I was like, well, God must be getting tired of my crap then because it was like, got to get it just poked a little bit. And then while we're wrapping up, because I think it's about that time, I remember like when you're talking about father, about finding a religion that fits, aligns with your, with your already set like system or whatever. One of the first things is like, it's not too long after you moved to Kansas city and you were talking with uh, a person we both knew and he, we were talking about struggling with people who were not very much like us. Um, you know, cause you know, kind of, I didn't grow up on the wrong side of the tracks, but I headed there as quickly as I could. I hung out there for a while. And so like, sometimes I have a hard time relating, you know, um, not so much anymore, but relating to people who were kind of boy scouts their entire life. And not that there's really anybody at our parish that's like a boy scout, boy scout, you know, I'm sure there's a couple of them. But nobody's real squeaky clean. But like uh, you were like, oh, you know, you said this to this person. Like, oh, so you just want yourself to hang out with. <laughs> you just want like you, you know, you want someone exactly like you who likes the same music, dress the same way, acts the same way as you. You just want to hang out with yourself like that's self-love. And it's like, God forbid, I could never I, I I don't know how you guys hang out with me. I <laughs> definitely <laughs> never hang out with myself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, man, yep, that's, that's, I just, yeah, 
why it's it's usually it's better i don't know what it is like when i get into a feedback loop with someone who's into comic books sure that's nice like yeah sure it's fun to talk about that kind of stuff but like there's a point at which like there's nothing to talk about anymore it's all about tension you know what i mean yeah there needs to be that it's about the tension and it's all about the balance that's all i think once you get to a certain point in your life if you're still clinging to these things like you like i like i am which i shouldn't be but i am you know to the you know childish things like comic books and superhero movies and whatever and star wars and stuff like that like to the extent that i still do cling to it it is like at a certain point like there's like this unspoken like at a certain point like you just don't talk about it with people really as much anymore. You know what I mean? Like the conversation doesn't really become about like the music you listen and like those conversations are nice, but it becomes just like, unsp- I remember being like 25 or 26 and like observing the behavior of my friends and man. Oh wait. So we just don't talk about that stuff anymore. Like, cause anytime it seems like I, t- I try and talk about it, the room goes silent and that's cool. Like it's, but it's like one of those things like, unconsciously like you know from the world i grew up like at a certain point you don't talk about how drunk you are when you're drunk you don't like sit around and talk about like man i'm so wasted you know like well that's one of the mysteries about christ though is that i mean that's the holy trinity there's always it's like it's communion it's the other and that's why self-love is it's just like yeah the icon for self-love is masturbation right you know what i mean and like it's so repugnant and sterile and pointless and that you know one mean? person who won't stop talking about the thing no one else is interested yeah. in yeah and so and that and that's tough because it's just kind of like they don't realize that like you know well hopefully they'll see one day that they, like you can only talk about yourself it's like you can only talk about yourself so much right and it's it that's that's a mystery that i think a lot of people don't get about christians is that it's like i don't get it it's like yeah because you haven't met god yet but once you've met christ there's always someone else there. Not not metaphorically, literally. You yeah. know what I mean? Like when two or three are together, you know, he's in the midst. There's always that people God's are scared always of that. There they're, 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 they're scared of that because they know, oh, if somebody was if anybody else was seeing me the way that I'm yeah. seeing myself, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't deal with having the mirror held up. I couldn't deal with somebody standing there with a the mirror. Yeah. Oh, it's it's the worst. Oh. Yeah, it's right. such an awful it's feeling. It's, it's such an awful feeling. So it's I forget which saint. I mean, I'm not. It, I'm just not remembering. But it's like if if you could see the look on your face when you're angry, you would never be angry again. Like if you could see like the way you look yes. when you're spitting mad, when your yes. face is all red and you're yelling, and that one certain vein is popping out, like you would never be angry again because it's just like it's so ugly. Like angry in a bad sense like because you didn't get your way because you're yelling at your wife because you didn't cook the dinner the right way or whatever so um well folks i think that's about two hours um uh um i don't have an audience question uh i guess real quick what have you got what have you guys been listening to what's music you guys have been jamming on recently Mm. oh father i know yours you talked at length about it last night and the oh, soul night. junk. Yeah, soul junk. Man, yeah. that soul junk album. You ever, you know soul junk, Cyprian? I gotta check this out. Oh man, I'm gonna send this to you, man. Send soul. it to me. And that's send great that me. soul junk gets to be on the spot. spot yeah, list. I'll put it on the but, list. But that album, that album's hard to get. The one I sent, I could, I can't get it. So like, good luck on that. But like, soul junk's good. They're like this really weird. So I I felt like a real ahead of their time personally, but like this album came out like two thousand. Okay, just, it's, it's that's just, my time frame. That's definitely my time frame. It's just a super eclectic. It's hard to describe, you know. It's it's got a very I don't know. I'll just send it to you. Send it. Yeah. I think you, now that you bring it up, Andrew, I've gone through a very, I think I've gone through a musical dry spell oh. during this um, fast. Sure. I've noticed myself just like, even even jumping in the car when I would usually turn on some music, like just not actively not doing it. Being it's, like, no, it's no, a beautiful right thing. Now. It's a beautiful thing. I, It's a beautiful thing. Like there's, 
yeah sure. that's a beautiful thing i mean i i love i love when i'm in that area sometimes because I, it's like okay you don't feel like you constantly need to be distracted mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um like it's okay to just sit here in silence and be uncomfortable you know with the silence blah 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 um but you know uh I want to let me just say this just because I don't think I've mentioned it before. Go ahead. Benjamin Clementine, you know, he just put out a new album and it's I've been listening to a lot of that. It's really good. So if nothing else, I want to throw that out there so people can check it out. You can put it on there. Benjamin Clementine. Put it on the list. <laughs> it's um. his third album, and like my family is like one of our favorite artists. We all, you know, he's kind of like he's he's this incredible. Put it on there now. Uh He's like a, a much more refined, less savage version of like Nick Cave and Tom Waits, but okay. like a Cockney East Ender, West Indian vibe. You know, like there's this kind of, there's like this weird per he has this weird Parisian jazz thing going on. It's really yeah, like I might be into this. Three albums. All three of them are very different. They're all incredible. Um, yeah, Benjamin Clementine. Incredible. Um, I mean, just just going by his aesthetic, I can oh, already tell I'm gonna be in I'm gonna be into this. Man, that's like that's always like the first thing that hits me. It's just like, yeah. am I into the aesthetic of the band? Yeah. Like I'm like all, right away. I'm all about his aesthetic. Like, Is this I'm like he's incredible? He's yeah, it, I'm all about you're it. welcome. You're welcome. Thank He's, you. Yeah, thank you. And I, I'm telling you, all three albums, like, don't just sleep on, like. Okay. All three I'm albums. In. like the, I'm in. Incredible. I'm in. I, 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 I'm just coming out of Christmas music. Um, So that's, and that's like, I'm pretty strict about that. Like, I try to stay pretty strict in like the, I have my, my playlist, my Christmas playlist. And I stay, I try to, and my sister got me Nat King Cole and the Peanut soundtrack on vinyl for Christmas. So that was pretty fantastic. So I've Nat King Cole, that he's almost like if Nat King Cole grew up listening to Tom Waits and Nick Cave. Okay. Hmm. Um, it doesn't make sense like that, but when you hear it, just when I hear it, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I could tell you, I had a very real experience. You know, when like you can like look at music and it's very 2D, and then like almost like the Iron Man thing, you can like flip it and like pull it out like that. So you can see like it in three dimensions and you can see like each aspect of the music. Like I had this like experience. I have this playlist on Spotify where it's like a, up to 170 songs. It's like my own personal thing. And each one, the point of the playlist is, is, one, I can't, I, I try very hard not to skip tracks. It's very much like I put it on random. It's 170 songs. I know all of them. They're all generally really good. They're all like hits. And like the point is, is it happens so frequently when I'm with a person who listens to, the, uh, who listens to music, you know, who's like a music fan, it gets dialogue going because it's, oh, I love the song. Did you hear the album before that? And like, you know, like there's like, I, I don't know. It, it's very, there's like sticks, there's queen. There's of course it's me. There's Celine Dion and Cher. And then, but then there's also like, like, um, I don't know. There's just like a bunch of bangers. Like generally people are going to have some opinions about this mu music. And the other day I was cleaning and maybe it just been a little while since I had listened to music, but uh, these eyes by the guess who came on, you know, you guys know the song I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, well, it's just a banger of a song. You know the guess who, Father, right? Do you know them at all? Yeah, it's okay. is that American Woman? Uh, no, I don't. Maybe they did. I that I'm not. I don't know. The only I don't know. They the sound only like, American Woman I know. They sound is like, like a fog hat. Something <laughs> like there's like the fog hats. Guess who he's and no, I don't know, man. Like I was listening to the song and it did that two-dimensional turn into 3d where i could like pull it apart and kind of look at each part of the song mm -hmm. and like it was just like it's very well written it's very well structured and it's groovy and like it just sometimes it's just the right time right place like it like th that experience of me like cleaning up my kitchen and listening to that song is going to stick with me for a long time and then it, it was just it was a very weird experience it's been a while since i've been able to do that with music most of the time i'm 
rushing around. There's kids, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't really listen to music on the way to work or anything because it'll cloud my noose and I need that to kind of be, you know, in a somewhat okay shape for counseling or whatever. But then also I think father and I have talked about them and I don't know exactly how to say their correct name, but there's a Ukrainian band called Daka Braka, I think yeah. is what was what they as their name. And um, my wife is like, they them. are crazy good. My wife loves them. Crazy. I wake up, I hear it is like, yeah. She's... They have one album, Light, and I think that album is like, I heard uh, my buddy show told me in an interview that they are like trying to uh, just make music for movies, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what it is. It's like that's just right. very well composed, cinematic, very well. cinematic. It's it's cinematic and slippery and i would encourage you to check these guys out because like okay. the their their banger their absolute banger is a song called baby and the beginning it's like if you have no context for these guys you're just like what the crap is this because like there's this guy and he's doing this weird like falsetto like weird kind of trying to sound groovy music and it's super boring but if you let the song build as it, it is and it's like a seven minute long song but if you, you say they're it, called daca braca daca braca yeah and like okay. it sucks because they're all in the total like hate and putin thing and i'm sure everyone is just falling over backwards to make daca braca feel comfortable because they're from ukraine or whatever but i like them before the russia ukraine conflict i'm going to continue like to like them what's that it's like toms yeah <laughs> yeah That's right, toms where everybody was Look at that picture I just sent you, by the way, because I don't like the fact that you felt abs- you felt that it was absurd that I made the connection between. Man, he looks a lot Nat like King, King Cole. Cole. And I'm just telling- oh no, I mean that. Yeah, that that's that's it right there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna absolutely that's check it right out. there. Listen, you but that, you should that, just conk, conk his hair back. Conk his hair back. <laughs> Listen, in that it. tiny desk, that tiny desk performance. Just watch that first song. You'll be like, oh, okay. And then everything else will be. T- the the Tiny Desk performance is kind of a litmus test. It is. It really I, is. It is a Did litmus see... test for, it is. Is, this, is this person a real yeah. musician? Mm-hmm. Did you see? Or uh, a fabrication? That's right. I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. Did you see uh, Wu-Tang's Tiny Desk? No. Like Wu-Tang. It didn't Tiny oh. Desk? Oh, they have the strings and stuff like they have like they have the oh, strings okay. on set that a, like it's that on a watch oh, fantastic right i don't know who else there player. it's just a couple of them it's not all nine but i think it's just like two or three of them wow. and like they have Good like I, I think they have like a bass drum and a snare and then they have like the strings on site like doing it. yeah it's it's fantastic it's huh? like oh yeah it's, it's fantastic one of the best i've ever seen so oh, um, i'm in yeah but um, we'll have a lot of stuff to add to the playlist tonight. But um, yeah, Daka Braco. I, I, I checked them out. They're one of those bands I forget about for like three years. And then I check them out again. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like incredible. And then I'll forget about it again. I'll, I'll like forget about them again. So, um, so uh, okay, I'm going to wrap up the show now. Um, so thank you for everyone for listening. Um do or do not smash the like button. I do not care one way or the other. Um, to check out this Spotify playlist that we've been talking about. It's a Royal Path pod- podcast playlist or something like that on Spotify. Uh, when you see um, when you see Bette Midler and Kate Bush and Mashuga all in the same playlist, you hit the right spot. Um, then. Also, check out our merch store, royalpath.store. Feel free to reach out to us at andrew at royalpath.network. Uh, I get all the emails. It's a one-man operation, so it takes me a long time to get back to people. But I am getting your guys' emails. Um, and we, you know, next week we'll, we'll probably do... We're going to do questions we never <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's like yeah. next we, week we'll do it next week. Yeah, we'll do it we next. Gotta, week. We gotta just commit to it next week. And this this week, I mean, as the same with every week, we did we did genuinely ask for guidance. So I mean, this <laughs> was not the week. This was not the week to do questions answers. Um. Uh. Also, oh, big one should have done this at the top. Hold you on, guys, on. thank you. I want to say thank should, you. Should have done it at the top. Can thank I, you to everyone who's um. Um, contributed and spread the word about helping out Mount Tabor. Should have said it way at the beginning. 
And I don't know, yeah. maybe you can throw, sure, but... throw it in there in editing. I don't know. But like, I just want to say like, off the top, thank you. God bless you. It, it means a lot. And like, yes, the dollars means a lot, but actually to be really frank, seeing support from people from all over the place, it's really encouraging. You guys have never met us before. So I just want to never... say like, God bless you guys. It, it means a lot. And it's, it, it is an investment. It's, it's, Think of, it is almsgiving because it's it's for the kingdom of God. It's for young souls to be enriched and to grow, uh, to become human beings made and fashioned after the image and likeness of God. So God bless you guys. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, for real. It's It was above and beyond what I thought was going to happen. It was yeah. above and beyond. And I know that's so YouTube-ish to say, you know, like you guys, I, I can't even, you know, this is above and beyond. Like, no, but... I genuinely, my jaw dropped a little bit when I saw the amount of donations. And like, I'm just going to say it like, you know, I think we have until nativity was the, but you know, it doesn't have to stop there. I mean, again, like if this is something that, that we believe in, it is something that we believe in still the any support that you can give, even just talking about it, okay. talking about it with people, it does not have to be monetary. Like it does not have to be money. Just talking about it and praying for us. Praying praying that's the we actually one. believe in prayer <laughs> yeah for, we actually, I mean, for actually real. believe in prayer so, for real yeah. no and saint john chrysostom is heavily involved in the you know in the school i mean you know like uh he's talked about at length and uh you know that's just not something i was ever really going to dream that was going to be able to be a possibility so um you said maybe you can make a note like for the thank you in the notes like go to this time mark or whatever because like uh, no done. i'm gonna take that clip and i'm gonna clip it and i'm gonna put it at the beginning perfect awesome. perfect awesome. perfect fantastic perfect oh um, no, it's like uh that'll be our, our memento intro. moment yeah, yeah there memento, you go. exactly it's our yeah. memento moment okay great uh so um other than that i again i'm very sorry it's been a week since we've it's been two weeks since we've recorded to the person who's doing the thumbnails Joe, Jack, I can't remember. I'm very, it's very Jack. Sure. It's Jack. Jack. Jack, you're killing it. This last one was my favorite. Like this was last very one you good. did with, yeah. with a yeah, that's been my favorite so far that you've done. Absolutely fantastic. Um, you're killing it. Thank you so very, very much. And Jack is doing a labor of love. We are not giving Jack. We're giving Jack Jack. Like we're not giving him anything. And he's still doing it for us. And he's he's bringing it every time. So anyway, um, I think that's it. Uh, proceeds from the store royal path dot store go to the church and one third to the person who creates it so we're not we're not seeing a dime of that so um okay yeah i think that's it thank you for having a good night bye bye